there's something that I did read when it came to people pleasing is that it can actually be, it's actually more selfish because you're caring more about how you're being perceived than actually listening to the other person. Uh, yeah, I, I would say it is to be so focused on self-protection isn't of itself a self-focused, a self-centered. We're just trying to meet our need. But we're saying and we're living as though we are these altruistic people um, who are being self-sacrificing for the good of others. There's a control issue in there. We're maybe trying to unconsciously control the narrative. And if I do this, this person will think this way of me, which is preferred. And we just, as it turns out, don't have that much control. So with your certification as an internet addiction and web psychology specialist, yeah, what unique challenges do you see with internet addiction? Yeah. If I could redo all of that learning and I have a, a manual that I wrote on internet addiction, I, I think I would change it and not just the word addiction uh, makes us automatically think of certain things. And I think you said it best, and that is um, to look at our um, our behavior uh, when we're using technology. Um, and like anything else, um, to determine whether or not it's healthy or not healthy, uh, there's there are three things, three quick tests uh, to determine if it's healthy or not. Does does this behavior happen in the absence of healthy relationships with other people? So um, is what I'm doing online, is that happening in secret or in pursuit of healthy relationships with people? Does it create um, shame and does it need to be a secret? And if those three things are present, um, just speaking for myself, I'm going to want to look at that for myself uh, to determine whether or not, I mean, just based on the answers that I come up with, it, uh, I'd have to be in serious denial um, to continue to do something that makes me feel shameful, needs to be a secret, and is not in the pursuit of having healthy relationships with other people. So that three things are like the litmus test for should I be doing this? or not. And I think it can be, it can, you can apply it to most things. And, and you're totally right about that. Uh, I have twin 27 year old daughters and the, their experience in life. I say crazy things like when they were growing up, um, when I was your age, there wasn't the word cell phone didn't exist. Like, you know, I've like become that, <laughs> that old man who says crazy things. Yeah. And um, it's, I think it must be really challenging to grow up where I remember the conversation in our house. Uh, our daughters were, I don't know, maybe 11 and everyone, anyone, all of their friends had cell phones. And my wife and I decided um, that there was going to be more thoughtfulness behind saying yes um, when they were ready. And it wasn't necessarily an age thing. It was our observing how they live their life and interact with people. Um, and so they, they got one at 12, um, but they were really unhappy because their friends got them at 11. And... Um, developmentally in the, in the absence of an identity, which is where I think all this, um, the hazard is for these kids online and social media, in the absence of our own identity, we're just chameleons and we will adopt to what is getting, well, if this gets the most likes, that's who I'm supposed to be. Um, so it's really not matched well, the developmental uh, milestones and technology 
They're not, they're not matched. We're not who we need to be yet. Um, when it comes to deciding on some of these things. I know more and more people are, even myself, I took a year break from social media. Like a digital detox. Exactly. And I think it's very important as well. And I'm sure you agree to this. It's, it's very important to take that detox and to, you know, not rely on something to validate your self-worth. Yeah. And I feel like social media has dampered people's self-worth, especially when it comes to the comparisons, the mindless scrolling. Yeah. It's just not real. I didn't know this. I don't, I don't think a lot of people know this, um, is that the answer to what's wrong with me today is in me. Um, it's not out there somewhere. Uh, the idea, um, I'll be happy when, um, is a dangerous pitfall, uh, to, to live each day, um, waiting for something or someone that's going to make me happy. You're going to wait a long time because it, it's, yep. you know, it's true. I never believed it, but now I do that. It's, it comes from within us, not because of the brand of shoe or the type of phone or, um, I mean, it's far more complicated than my, I'm not minimizing the importance of things and how things equal status and status equals worthiness. Um, it's, it's so complicated. Right. And I like to see how people, if you, those things were taken away from you, right? It's what do you have left? Mm. And I think, you, you know, touching back on social media and internet addiction, if that was taken away, right? It's like a safety blanket almost in a way. And it's like, what, okay, what else am I going to re rely on for external validation? Well, just the, the words that you're using, it's fascinating. You, you said it's like a safety blanket. And then you said, um, what am I going to rely on? And so I would be really curious to know, rely on for what? And what is it that, what is it that the person needs safety from? So I guess the way that you said it, the problem is not social media and technology. The problem, if there is one, might be more about why are people feeling so unsafe in the world and that the remedy yeah. to that lack of safety is being sought in, in a, a device and in the absence of a healthy ego, um, we are going to need more things to fill whatever it is that we're looking to satisfy or fill. Um, if we, we're all self-actualized and, you know, a hundred times healthier than, than we yeah. are right now, or I am right now. Um, I wouldn't need anything outside of me or outside of my little influence in the world. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I'm sure lots of your, your listeners, viewers do. A glance, a misinterpreted look of a stranger has the potential to ruin a day for lots of people. And then if we think about that, if, if that, I hope that made sense, um, that if somebody who is not important to us and whose life we know nothing about gave a look that got filtered through our, our filter of what looks mean, can ruin our day, um, what that at least in part communicates is that um, my ability to be okay in the world today um, is dependent on the, uh, the appraisal of a stranger. And that said that way doesn't make any sense to me. And I think that if we were to rephrase things to ourselves, um, a person that means nothing that I'll never see again changed my mood. Um, that would, 
I don't have enough power in my own life if if that's what's happening here. And that feels sad to me to be that vulnerable to a stranger's. And like everything else, we have no idea what's going on with that person. Maybe they just stepped on a nail and they went like that with their face and it had nothing to do with us. We validate the stranger's perception of us. We prioritize that person's, not even perception, what we think that person's perception is above everyone else's in the world. Even if there's contrary evidence that we are good enough and okay, hopefully if we just, if we can stop and be more rational with ourselves and less emotional in that moment, um, if we have the potential to rein it in a little bit um, and not abandon our power to strangers. And I mean, I see that, you know, at the treatment center here, it's the most common thing that I see. Um, it's why I think what we're trying to do a little bit differently. A wife said, are you going to be able to help my husband? He was an alcoholic and had been for like 30 years. And I said, respectfully, I'm not sure because I don't know what's wrong yet. And she was very upset with that uh, and said, what do you mean what's wrong? Um, he he drinks every day. He His health is in trouble. His children won't speak to him. He We got separated three months ago. What do you mean? What, and that's just what gets people in the door. On one, in one respect, yes, being an alcoholic and drinking every day, that is a serious life-threatening problem. But I have to imagine with everybody before I know their story, I know, I think I know for a fact that that person's in pain underneath their addiction. Um, healthy, happy people generally are not uh, alcoholics just doesn't happen that way. Um, so I think what, what what we're trying to do here is to see the person underneath their unwanted behavior. Uh, there's a, on my office door, there's a, a, a painted sign that says, the people who need the most love in the world oftentimes go about asking for it in the most unloving of ways. And I use that to remind myself and anybody who walks by the door, um, try to look past these behaviors that are frustrating and annoying and scary and, and see the person underneath all that stuff. Um, because if I see somebody in pain versus, or if I look at somebody and see them, this person's in pain versus this person's an alcoholic. Um, my ability to be empathic and helpful is completely dependent on how I frame how I frame that person to myself. They're a drunk versus um, they're an in incredible pain. I want to help the person in pain. I guess that that's an example of the power of words and how we speak about people and to people. And then more personal, how we speak to ourselves, about ourselves. And I don't you know, mean this is all like psychobabbly, but imagine, I try to imagine a world where there was just a lot more empathy and a lot less judgment. Um, we would have a different, uh, different experience. Hey guys, I would like to take a moment to introduce you to our app, Yoga Plus. You will have access to an incredible selection of videos led by top instructors in yoga, fitness, nutrition, and so much more. Download our Yoga Plus app available on iOS and Android today. 